I am my best version of me if I'm painting. And I want to give that to my husband, my family, my friends, my my children. I want to get be the best version of myself to everybody f- for me and for them. So if I'm able to paint because it's very therapeutic, no matter what's going on in my life, the day is going to be better. Like it's just going to be better. Welcome to the Passion and Progress show with me, Javier Mercedes. I'm a YouTuber that specializes in video tech tutorials. And every Wednesday, I sit down and have an inspiring conversation with an entrepreneur, a creative, or just an all around doer. My guest this week has been a full-time artist for four years now. Check out her Instagram account if you have not yet. It's at Emily Mercedes Art. She's made print collections of everything from bourbon bottles, classic cars from movies, watches, and she's even done a painting of the exact microphone that I'm talking into right now, the Shure SM7B. But my words can only do so much, so I strongly suggest again to check out her Instagram account at Emily Mercedes Art. Before we get things kicked off, I just want to say a big thank you to the people that have been supporting me on Patreon. It means the world to me that you guys dig the content and the inspiration that has come along with this podcast so much that you want to support me in that way. I'm at www.patreon.com forward slash Javier Mercedes. If that is not your cup of tea and you still want to support me, Javier Mercedes, you can share this podcast out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. My handle is at Javier Mercedes X. That's J-A-V-I-E-R Mercedes X. Don't forget that you can leave me a review on iTunes. With all of that out of the way, let's get to the 33rd episode of Passion and Progress with Emily Mercedes Art. What is up, Mercedes and Javier Mercedes here for yet again another Passion in Progress show where we interview inspiring individuals and hopefully through hearing their stories, you too are motivated to go out and pursue your passions. Today is the most specialist of special episodes because it is the 33rd episode of Passion in Progress. Emily Mercedes Art, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic. I didn't know it was number 33. Yep. That's a big number for the Mercedes crew. All the boys love that number. Emily is my sister-in-law to those out there. I actually reviewed our old interview that I had with you and yeah. I make a comment that I had under 100 subscribers and I was hoping that by the time I released that interview that it was it was going to be like over 100 subscribers. That's big time, though. You hit a thousand a little while back, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For the listeners, give a overview of your art in general. Absolutely. So I quit my day job about going on four years ago because I really, really, really wanted to paint when my at the time I only had one kid when he was napping. Um, I just had I just really wanted to paint and be a mom. And I was just dying to have that happen and got the opportunity to just go ahead and walk away. And by opportunity, it was a big giant leap of faith. And I put all my eggs in one basket and was hoping for the best. <laughs> really? That's translation. I think it's, playing out. it's playing out finally a few years later. So right now I'm definitely making way more of a living than day one, which is kind of, I guess, how, how you roll with the entrepreneurial reinvesting back in yourself and everything like that. Painting almost every single day, I would say I paint or sketch almost every single day, which has provided a lot of content, a lot of really cool original paintings, and a lot of really cool prints that have come from that as well. So um, this year too, I've been able to do a lot more live events is what I've been calling them. But basically when I show up at an event and show my artwork, whether it's hanging behind me and I have a few prints with me, or for example, tomorrow I'll be at West Elm for a few hours um, to get that last minute holiday shopper, hopefully the perfect gift, but I'll bring a lot of prints and greeting cards. So that has happened a lot more within the last year. I've been just getting things to put the prints in and a legit credit card reader and all of that stuff. Whereas before I was mostly selling only online. That's very fun because I absolutely love talking to people. And um, it's really neat to see people's reactions in person to the art because I tend to err on the side of funny if I can with my artwork, not every single piece I make is funny. It's either nostalgic or funny if I can remind you of a good time. So um, watching their reactions in person has been priceless. What at this point is more profitable? Is it the in-person actual stuff or is it selling things online? Um, it's still the online, but depending on the event, for example, um, 
if you live in Austin if, and you haven't gone to the East Austin studio tour, definitely do it. This was my first year being a participant and it was just bonkers. I had to restock my prints and greeting cards and I was reframing stuff to put it back on the wall to make sure my wall looked full pretty much constantly for back to back weekends. It was it was very, very rewarding, very cool and very worth doing. Um, but for example, like sometimes I'll show up like at a West Elm event, which is really great for name recognition. Everyone knows what that is. But, you know, I'll sell a few pieces and mostly chat with people and kind of relax. But part of the reason why I do that is, again, the name recognition, but the adult interaction because I'm a mom all week and it's, you know, my my son's talking a lot more, but it's nice to actually interact with people. One of the awesome things about you is you said that when you're creating a piece of art every, or at least sketching, you're touching and doing your craft in some way, shape, or form every single day while being a mother of two kids. And <laughs> yeah. with, with what you're doing now, um, from when you started and first take, took the leap, what's the big shift in like how you approach making art? First of all, to in order to get any of this done while being a parent, I have to be super intentional with my time. Um, the biggest shift I would say is from the first day I accepted every commission that came in because I was like, okay, I'll, yes, I can paint that. Yes, I can paint that. Um, and I practiced a lot and did that 90 day challenge. Uh, it was 90 days of nostalgia just to get better and have a portfolio. Can you explain what that is? Yeah. So I made one painting a day for 90 days straight. Boom. That was a lot. <laughs> That's one painting a day. <laughs> oh my God, that's crazy. <laughs> At the time, I didn't really know what my style was because like, for example, this be behind me here, I'm referencing a giant acrylic painting that I did. It's in all my videos if you follow me on YouTube. <laughs> that is a very large scale painting, which I eventually want to do more of. But when I am working on my kitchen table and I don't want my kid to put their hand in all of the paint and all of that, I was like, I should get good at watercolor. So I just practiced a lot in watercolor. And that 90 day challenge really, like if... I don't have a lot of those photos up on it on um, anything anymore, mostly because I've gotten so much better that I'm like, oh, I got to take it all down. Like, it's that's just, interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Although I feel like with Instagram, um, what happens is it's just like so far down in the feed, especially with how much content you pump out that it's like if people are real diehard about like you, I feel like if they if they if they if they really want to get into it, they like they'll just start scrolling down and then you can actually see the progression of how you've come from I don't know just a couple years ago yeah well I would say the main difference too um from then to now is that initially when I did did have those photos up my work in progress I say that in like air quotes my work in progress picture was a crappy not well lit picture of a painting that was halfway finished so if you were looking on Instagram you'd be like that's a crappy painting. And if you didn't you know what I mean if you didn't yeah. read what the con you know what I mean yeah 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 so I since then, since I did that 90 day challenge and painted almost every day in between, um, I wanted to do the 100 day project and I pitched it to my husband, Brian. I was, I was hoping that he would say, Emily, that's a terrible idea. You will not get any sleep. It will be insane. I love how you're pitching your husband on I, well, because also my brother. <laughs> yes, I had to pitch it to him because he'd be it's helping true. extra. You it's know, true. It's true. he would take up like, not that I cook very well and that often, but he would really have to like cook pretty much every single night and take over the second the kids get home. Uh, the kids get home. Where are you? Mm -hmm. Where have you been, kids? <laughs> the second he gets home. Mm -hmm. So I was wanting to do... Um, the whiskey collection, I pitched in the idea of doing 100 days of drinks. And by that, I mean painting, not drinking all of those. I am not a lush. <laughs> I do like a glass of red wine, though. Um, but anyway, so I pitched it to him thinking that he'd be like, this is a terrible idea. And instead, he was like, Emily, that's a really good idea. I was like, crap, I got to do it. Mm -hmm. So this time around, I was like, OK, my main focus is to get very good at time lapse videos for these paintings. And you can tell from them, these are all up on my Instagram. It's um, at Emily Mercedes Art. If you look at it, you can see toward the very beginning of my process, like I was maybe finishing the time lapse half with through, halfway through because Mila woke up from her nap and it was just, you know, it wasn't. It's so as real though. That's tight. like, like yeah. your, your, what, the example that you're giving. Yeah. It was like, I, I got to go. She's awake now. And then I realized, okay, I started getting better, like, Probably day 50, I really hit my stride in that one. And I 
completely trained myself not to move the paper and almost entirely paint an entire painting. I did have it sketched beforehand. I never thought about this until I filmed you um, doing it. And you brought up how you don't move the piece of paper. And if people uh, listening, if you haven't done art in a while or just any handwriting in general, um, moving the piece of paper to slant to fit your the curvature of your hand is always there. But when you're doing it for a time lapse, it's like that's a whole nother talent in and of itself. Totally worth doing because yeah, I would say it pays off. I've watched other artists and there are plenty of other par- artists that do um, time lapse, beautiful time lapse paintings and they just work perfectly. But there are some that are just tr- starting out um, and you got to give them grace because I came from there, too. But they're turning their canvas a bunch. And ideally, that's the best way for you to get the best line, for example. But if you can keep it straight on, the viewer can watch left to right, top to bottom, this whole thing kind of come to life. It's it's so much more practical from a viewer standpoint. Exactly. And that's when brands started taking notice. Oh, hellfire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's when brands started to take notice. They're like, wait a minute. She does this. We have this. So all of a sudden in the mail, I'm getting these bottles of rum. And I mean, I could throw a party <laughs> right now because mm-hmm. um, so these companies are reaching out. Yeah. Referencing your, your whiskey collection in general. For- this time last year, I made a bourbon collection. I had mm-hmm. just gone to the bourbon trail. I was looking at all these bottles and the history behind it. And I was like, wow, this would be really fun to paint. And my dad, Papa Joe, shout out Papa Joe, he gave me this idea, pick whatever 15 you want on the print. So essentially this print has 15 bottles um, that I've curated, um, painted on, on the print. And before when I was doing collections, I would paint the collection as is. So I would have, for example, I have a movie comedy car edition um, and it has nine cars and I painted the entire original from start to finish with all nine cars, super teeny, tiny, small. And if I made one mistake, that whole original was, sorry, ruined. Luckily I didn't, but I was like, wow, you're right, dad. I should make these separate. He told me you should do the bottle separately because there might be a big fan of Four Roses that wants just that bottle. And my mind was so blown, but it takes people from around me to get give me ideas for me to kind of step outside my comfort zone and be like, oh my gosh, I could totally do that. And so then that spurred me doing 15 bourbon bottles. And I launched that bourbon print. It was the Friday before Thanksgiving. I intentionally did it. I had just gotten back from from Kentucky, but I intentionally did that timing because I said people are getting in the mindset to start shopping for Christmas. They're also getting the mindset of maybe b- busting out their best bottle of bourbon. So to combine the two, I was like, let's see how this goes. And hundreds and hundreds of prints sold. I was packaging orders the entire month. The All of the originals from that collection sold within 48 hours. There was one that was maybe a week later. And it was just like, wow, there's something here because a lot of those also remind people of their favorite, like their bachelor party or whatever their favorite moment is. So that's another version of the nostalgia that I was hitting on as well. So that's kind of what cued me into doing more of these bottles. I was like, well, maybe I'll do a champagne collection shortly after that. So I did the champagne collection. That's 15 beautiful bottles of champagne. And then I wanted to do a whiskey collection, which would be another 15 bottles. And I was like, well, you know, if I'm already going to do 15, I might as well do all 100. And then if I do, (laughs) I have a problem. That's how that works. (laughs) I have a problem. I have a painting problem. I know I need help. (laughs) Yeah. So anyways, yeah, that's kind of what, but if I did a hundred days of drinks, then on the days that I didn't have nearly as much time, for example, to do an entire bottle with a label, I could do a cocktail, which maybe would take an hour and a half from start to finish as opposed to eight to 12 hours, which yeah, I did not get a whole lot of sleep. It, your your story arc so far is like leaving what you were doing with the steady job and everything, hitting and just putting putting in the quantity to get to your quality and finding the efficiencies and what works, what doesn't work. And then uh, you, I mean, obviously you have a backlog of content and then all of a sudden you hit one that strikes gold and you're like, you know what, that's what I need to be doing. And then then you can I just like I want that moment where um in my own content where it's like oh man that thing really hit and then I can just like focus all my energy if in it I want it to be something that I'm actually like super passionate about which there's a couple videos that I have right now that are going in the um in the tutorial space which is really helpful I'm like oh my gosh this is exactly where I want to grow um so I know if I can keep focusing my energy there it'll it'll grow on itself but 
In your circumstance, has the Bourbon one still been your bestseller to date? Or uh, what other collections have you come out with that have hit that kind of mark? Yes. So Bourbon Collection by far to date is the bestseller. Okay. Um, second best is a memorable movie. It's iconic. My iconic gun collection. But they're from they're from movies. So there's 15 guns on, on one page. It's just a... It's, it's just a badass piece of art, even if you don't know it's from a movie. And then what's fun is that say you have it, have it hanging in your office. I hear people saying like, it's so fun to watch people try and guess all of them. And you can reference my website after the fact if you can't remember which gun each one is. So that's the second bestseller. And then there's some kind of like underdogs where I'm like, whoa, that's kind of a surprise. Uh, the Pappy Van Winkle collection. I did a family of five and family of six still on the booze train, but that one is very steady. Um, one that was kind of surprising, the launch was very soft and I thought it would be better, but I did um, gaming consoles and gaming controllers, super vintage consoles and controllers. And I was super pumped because it was the first time I was launching two prints at one time. And you almost have to get both of them because they match console to controller. And it was a decent launch. It just was like for the amount of time and effort that I put into it, I was like kind of disappointed, but I will tell you, that is the best seller at live events because guaranteed people are flipping through the prints. They stop. They hold it up. They look. I had this one, this one, this one. Oh my gosh, this would be perfect for my brother. Oh my gosh, this would be perfect for my sister. You know, it doesn't matter what age I gamed. I was not, I wouldn't consider myself a gamer, but I got pretty good at 007. <laughs> <laughs> not very. But so that's that's definitely been a dark horse. I just feel like the right person of influence needs to see the painting uh, for gaming and then it'll just like, it'll click because it just mm. like, it has the power glove on it. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah. In between doing the like hundred days and all that other stuff, like constantly churning out content, what does your original work look like? The uh, like the really big pieces. Have you been doing more of that, less of that? Do you want to still fit that kind of stuff into your um into your creative life, or like what is it fulfilling to you to do that kind of stuff? Because to me, um, you you found something that works. Does that start to wane? Like ah, oh, I just like am I going to keep doing this, or do you go? Do you create more pieces like that are just like? I, I want to say the abstract kind of stuff too. Still, so. very good question. I think right now, because of our current house situation, mm -hmm. I paint on my kitchen table, and with two kids running around, I still very much focus on watercolors. You don't, you don't do accidental um, abstract where one kid spills something on there, and then you're like, <laughs> "Oh my gosh, that is great, <laughs> genius!" Actually, my son Rylan really loves to do abstract paintings, and I'm learning a lot from him in his carefree methodical way of doing it there's some really cool ones but yeah at this point I would love to do larger pieces of work and I would love actually to have my own gallery slash studio mm -hmm. hopefully sooner rather than later I was gonna say it's gonna happen <laughs> I would love that because it would combine me my love for talking to humans I, I've always loved chatting mm -hmm. with even complete strangers and people that I know and love um, so that would be the best combo for me and I'd have enough space to be able to kind of stretch out a little bit more and create larger pieces. I would love to see if I can create something similar to what I do on watercolor paper right now on a big canvas or even clayboard, which is a new, um, it's a cool quote unquote canvas that um, I've used once or twice before that you can actually use watercolor on. And it's awesome, but I haven't really been able to really hone in and get good at it mm -hmm. um so yeah i really really would love to i have a massive oil painting above our couch that's one of my favorites by far it's all the cities that my husband and i have lived in um throughout our life that kind of stuff takes a good six weeks from just to even create <sighs> yeah when some of your stuff you would go through like the shoes that you designed for um bucket feet you, like you just sat there and hit you didn't paint lines you did like specific dots like all throughout the whole thing right yeah there was a small a teeny tiny like pixelated pattern that i mm -hmm. did if you look at it from far away it becomes one holistic painting but if you go really close to it it's just all little dots it's crazy like that has to take so much time Art in general, you have to give it time. Like, a, and a, even some of these commissions, I have a wait list right now, which is, it sounds, I sound pretty cool saying that. I know, but I want, I don't want to rush your piece. And I know people know that. So very mm -hmm. rarely are people reaching out like, hey, is that 
that done yet? They know that, okay, it might be a few more weeks and that's okay because I don't ever rush it. Um, But yeah, it just takes time. I would love to work on a bigger scale soon. What else, if you were to have like all the monies and all that other stuff, what else would you be doing art-wise right now? Oh my gosh, that's such a good question. Um, I keep saying that. You're a good interviewer, Harvey. Um, <laughs> if I if I had all of the... the I, I honestly... Mean, even if it wasn't just like a money thing, but like literally if you woke up tomorrow and like you had somebody watch the kids and like everything was exactly. okay, like there was no family, like uncle so-and-so isn't having illnesses and all that stuff. It's just like you have the perfect day ahead of you. What would that look like? Because time is money. I think if I had the time, so that's a great way to structure it. If I had more time, my day would involve... I would actually get a chance to work out and do yoga. Oh my gosh, yoga. so true. I would love that. <laughs> I, I go on walks with Mila and I am that person at the park that's doing squats and lunges. Don't care. But it's I again, I have to be intentional with my time. I don't mm-hmm. have that full hour to drive all the way to a gym, drop the kids off, do something that I could do outside. Mm-hmm. So I do that kind of stuff. So I'd probably you know, focus a little bit more on, on me and Mm -hmm. really make sure that, because if I'm healthy and feel stretched out, then I'm going to make better work. Um, but this year or tomorrow, whatever it may be, I really, really, really want to focus more on some of the ideas that I've had stuck in my head for a while. And I've been focusing more on other people and what other people may want, uh, whether it's a commission or, um, a collaboration or, um, anything like that so I have all of these nostalgic it's basically nostalgia with a twist like I did three years ago but no characters involved more things from your past and adding a twist to it I have an entire list that I've written down and a lot of those would actually make great prints and a lot of those would make great greeting cards Um, so I really want to like focus on expanding my greeting card line and some prints but with what I want to do now like Yes, I had a few things that have worked well. I have one more bottle commission to do, but I've really, the last like 20 custom requests, I'm like, I won't be able to do that for you because I, I don't want to. And I don't think it's fair to that person for to, for me to like just get through a painting because I know I'm, I'm going to do a good job with it and I would do a good job with it. But if I don't want to paint, it's not going to be fun for me to sit down, especially when I have a certain amount of time to work with it. I don't know if I answered your question. I want to do more stuff that's stuck in my head and get it out on paper. Yeah, I, yeah, I think you put in the work though to like yeah. one. You like I said, you have the quantity there, and um, I think I've said in past podcasts where, and I think you are the the, the um, example of whenever I think of this is you just keep doing stuff until people oh. It's Emily. She does this like she does paintings. And like anytime you greet somebody and they don't know who you are or if we're in a social uh, situation, it's like, oh, do you know Emily? She does this. And then it's so quick to be like, pull up your Instagram account and they'll be like, oh, that's really cool. Like it's it's very um, straightforward what you do. Yeah. Which I, I think is cool. And uh, the reason I bring it up is because y- I feel like you've put in the work to showcase what you can do and to garner a following that is into what you do. And now I'm super pumped to see whatever you want to do with that in terms of like here you are putting more things with a twist, but with a, more of an Emily voice on it, I guess. Yeah. A big exciting thing over the last three years is because I have become my own brand. So you're right. I'm my own best PR. So mm-hmm. I'm, by the end of a party, you're going to know I'm an artist. Probably oh, by yeah, the very for beginning. Sure. For sure. um, but it's been really fun to be who I am. And that's my brand. And that's it's easy to be passionate about something because it's it's me. It's like I'm it's emilymercedes.com. It's like this is this is me. This is what I care about. This is what I'm passionate about. I'm no longer the Barry girl because I used to run a website called The Barry and that was really fun for me to do. And I wouldn't take it back for anything because it helped me garner the tools that I would need to do this. So, yeah, it's yeah. Because I feel like I'm going to interview other artists on this show, like further down the line yeah. or, or or other other people that because like, a lot of creative people listen to this podcast and I'm sure they have art on mind and everything. What What are some like tips just like day to day, like efficiency wise. So to give you an example, for me, like just having my light above my uh, computer to light me to do tutorials, that 
takes away about 10 minutes and I can get to the creative process and producing content so much faster. What are some things like that in your world that you do day to day? Because I know you have to have some things that are so efficient when you get that nap time and all that stuff from your kids. Yes. So from a painting standpoint, um, because I'm so focused on the time lapse looking good, it's kind of a mess, but I keep everything laid out because if I had to put all the same thing, if I had to put all of my art supplies, all of my lighting, my tripod for the camera clip back out every day, that's that's eats into 10 or 15 minutes of a quality nap time where Rylan's at school and Mila's sleeping. I, it's go time. Another thing that um, that I focus on during that time is, you know, answering a few emails. I like to be as present as I can possibly be when my kids are awake. So I try to avoid it's easy to get in the rabbit hole of looking at your phone because there's always going to be someone that needs a response, but they don't need it right now. So I'm trying to get better at that. But answer a few emails that are maybe pressing make a print order that I need to make for my print shop to print some some stuff for me to ship out. And then I start sketching, sketch, sketch, sketch as much as I possibly can. You eat some time in there and that's it. Um, but then I focus on my painting in the evenings, which is another thing that I want to focus on next year is it is easy for me. I could sit down every single night and paint, but I also really, really, really love hanging out with Brian, my husband. So I will be less tired if I just take a few more nights off like that so it it kind of tees it up by the end of um you know when my kids are going down I can sit down and I've already sketched a few things then I can bam just start painting right away instead of you know trying to do too many other things at once before I even sit down it's like no this this is ready for me to paint let's do it so I just get my water get what I need and just go it's go time Um, but another thing that really helps me with efficiency is, um, because I do a lot of my orders online. So separate of the painting and more, um, fulfilling orders, um, Brian, the business business side. Yeah. Yeah. Brian got me this awesome, um, drawer. Um, it's a print drawer that keeps every, it's like a stay flat type of drawer system that he got for me, like best decision ever, because now I have. The second I get prints, if they're for just my inventory, I sign them. So it's worth a lot of money, especially if I sign them. No, I sign them. I sign them. I put them in um, cellophane with some backing, some really heavy duty cardboard, like uh, chipboard backing. Um, And then, you know, put the little sticker because you got to market yourself. Branding, branding, branding. It's all set up in there. So if I, like before I came to see you today, I had two orders that came through and it took me maybe two minutes to package up these orders because I have all everything I need laid out for packaging up an order right there in the same system. So I pull everything out, slide it in, put the stickers on it and then print out a shipping label and they're in my car. I'll drop them off after I leave here. So I just have to think of how, how can I make this the easiest thing I can possibly do and take up the like least amount of time? Mm-hmm. That's also just another word for efficiency, but those are <laughs> those are those are the some of the things that I wish I would have gotten that system earlier because it would have taken me three times as long if I just had a stack of the prints, had to put them in the sleeve, do all the things. So that has been really helpful too. And do you have your own printer now for your prints? So no, I still outsource that to a print shop in okay. town. I have a scanner. So oh, half, okay. Yeah. Oh, scan, so scanning your stuff, and it's a, I assume it's a very legit scanner. Oh yeah, I <laughs> got a hold of my print shop, and I was like, "What scanner do you have?" They told me what kind, and I got the newer version of what they got. Mm-hmm. I was not messing around with that because I'm like, if I'm gonna have this for however many years, it's gonna be a good one. And and again, it goes back to time is money. I used to have to drop off an original painting wait one to two days to get the scan back and still have to re-edit it Mm -hmm. so now that's another thing if you look around day 50 of my 100 day challenge those pictures those quote those product shots that i was uh making they came from like a picture from my iphone and i would mock it into a frame to look more legit than just me taking a picture with my iphone on my table um or like outside to get better lighting like the the lighting was not great and then bam, I get the scanner, I'm able to scan it in, edit it, make a perfect um, variation of it in in a way, like I don't edit the image itself 
a whole lot. Like if there's a piece of lint on it, I'll take it off. But I mostly have to make the background of it white. So, so when a print, pops, yep. yeah. So when a print comes out, they're not. It's such high resolution that it would actually print portions of my own watercolor paper on the print. Mm -hmm. So you have to edit all of that too. So it just looks bright and crisp and awesome. And if I did end up, you know, putting, I would put it live that exact same day. If somebody wants the original, they could buy it that day. If somebody wants a print, they could buy it that day. And it involved not driving to anywhere to do the things. So I just, it, it cut out a lot of time there too. Uh, what about on Instagram? What have you done? Um, because you have to have some uh, wealth of knowledge in what worked or what you were trying to do in the beginning of even like a hundred days of nostalgia to what you're doing today. How are you efficient on Instagram now? Posting, posting every day. Is it one or two posts? It would be two posts a day. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Uh, and I still try to do that, but if I don't have the content to do it, I can't, I can't like today I didn't post anything yet cause mm -hmm. I haven't painted anything. Um, I took a break last night kind of, um, but I would post, for example, a time lapse right in the morning, and then I would post the final picture in the evening, and then I scatter in pictures of me from live events or me holding a painting, because looking from a perspective of liking to go on Instagram sometimes to just peruse, I want to know what that person looks like, no matter what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important, you know, in the top half of your feed to always have a picture of you in there too, because if they if they can recognize you or see where you're coming from, they're more often, they're more often likely to, I don't know, maybe buy a piece of your work later on because you're a real human. You're not a machine that made this thing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, posting every day. So to give you an example, even with the not so great pictures during the 90 day progress, I had my, my Emily Mercedes art handle was called nostalgia with a twist. Um, because that was my idea for the 90 day challenge. I didn't even think about branding myself as the artist at first. It took my brother-in-law, John, to be like, y you should really put your name on there. And I was like, oh yeah, that'd be, it's like sometimes the most obvious thing that you figure out later. And you're like, mm -hmm. well, I managed to learn from that, but I got about a thousand followers just from painting a painting a day on that, on my Emily Mercedes art account, um, not having the videos and from start to finish on the 100 day progress um i got probably 1500 new followers in a hun in 100 days exactly mm -hmm. you could you could clock it i was like just cranking it out and mm -hmm. people took notice and they wanted to see what was happening the next day and yeah i think there's de definitely something there for the algorithm if you're doing that much content and you so can you talk about um when you cuz i just did this um when you split and had a specific feed for your art and then also you have your personal um because your personal was pretty big i mean in the grand scheme of things mm -hmm. um in terms of just like where it was at and then you started the art one can you talk about how uh because you talked about you want to see people in the actual feed like they're an actual person mm -hmm. but uh i don't like at this point i don't think you're like you're featuring your kids or anything like that can you talk about the decision behind that and then how obviously it's played out um and like when you're po and when you're making art do you do you always want to be like oh i want to put this on my personal too and my thing like how how is that so my personal um, feed is just Emily Merce, and I, I really only put my family pictures on there. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Because I personally like to follow certain friends of mine from that account as well. And I only follow art and creative things from my Emily Mercedes art account. So it's a different user experience from my end as well. Um, so unfortunately, if I scroll through my Emily Mercedes art and I see somebody's kid, although they're really, really cute, that's I only have a certain amount of time that I can go on that and enjoy it and maybe gain some really great inspiration. I'd like to compartmentalize that on my other account because mm -hmm. that's what I'm sharing over there as well. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I just I just right away knew how would I like to view this. And there's some artists that, you know, do share beautiful pictures of their kids, but you're going to see. A huge loss of followers the second you put up something with your family, unfortunately. Yeah. So I kind of care a little bit less on the um on the personal one who follows me, who doesn't. It's more for me to go back and look at you know Mila's hashtag and look like like show somebody this is what she looked like a few 
mm-hmm. you know, months ago. This is how she's changed now. So it's more of like a personal album that you're welcome to follow if you want to. Yeah. And yeah. I don't even really pay attention to the numbers. But that one was um, live um, when I was the Barry girl. Like I, toward the tail end of running the website, I had mm-hmm. that one live and I was like, oh, there's something here. And I was just kind of learning how to use it. Um, so the art that I do put on that one is usually when I have a launch of a collection that I've worked on. So I'll, on my Emily Mercedes art, I'll do, you know, all nine to 15 items, um, time-lapse videos in before and after pictures and the final picture. And then I'll just go ahead and put up on Emily Merce, like, oh, I also did this, but it's more so to be like, if you want to see how I made this, follow Emily Mercedes art. So I'm able to funnel, true friends of mine a lot of those people i actually know over to oh hey i didn't know she had an extra account i thought Mm -hmm. she put art and kids on both Mm -hmm. so i kind of can leverage both different types of audiences that way Mm -hmm. um yeah i'm assuming when you come out with a like a collection then you'll be posting on both yeah uh, and and what you're talking about i i'm also assuming that at the very beginning you were doing a lot more trying to funnel it to your to your art stuff when you were coming out with art yeah, yeah. And um sometimes I'll put up commission things that don't necessarily match my aesthetic on Emily Mercedes art too. Mm-hmm. Um or just like a random Instagram stories are the same too. Like I don't really put a ton of behind the scenes other other than like art related things or what's yeah. going on in my art world on my art one. Mm-hmm. Cuz you'll still see a downtick of people that are like this isn't what I thought I was getting when I w- am looking at your your brand. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's been so much more liberating, even in the like two weeks or the one week. I think it's been a week and a half since I started my uh my passion and progress one. But the you can tell just like, oh, podcast people are following me now and like all this other stuff. And I'd and when I would do all these interviews, I wouldn't I would have I'd like do the interviews, then I would garner, I don't know, twenty followers from whoever I was interviewing. And then I would start posting stuff about cameras and all that stuff, and then I'd just start like I would gain more camera people, but then lose some. And then it would just like, I've I've been plateaued at like 900 for like in some for a while. But uh, then just starting the specific, like, here's the podcast. It's like, oh, when I make something like I know it can go in this space and I know how things can fit there, you know? Exactly. (laughs) It's so liberating. I have um, an idea Mm -hmm. for you. Sure. Do it. So since you do have them separated now, mm-hmm. um, kind of like the my variation of the what's on Emily Murs, where I still do like little hints of what I do on the other one and, mm-hmm. and push people over. You probably have so many funny bloopers from the things that you've done. Mm-hmm. You could you could put some behind the scenes and bloopers on your Javier Mercedes mm-hmm. of uh, even if it's just you being Javi because everyone freaking loves mm-hmm. what you've got well, going th- on. That that's the other thing too. Now that I've done this, I'm like I'm not as like I like you were just saying, like now I don't actually care about the numbers <laughs> on my personal one and I'm, all, I'm now I'm like, huh, I wonder if my numbers are actually going to go up on my personal now that, that I'm just going to like just post whatever here. People can follow the passion and progress ig handle and they'll just get that kind of feed now exactly i'm mm-hmm. happy i saw that come <laughs> up and i was like that's perfect Tommy. yeah yeah the the only other thing in what you were talking about with the name was like oh, i wonder further down the line if it's going to be like the hobby or mercedes show or something like that but at the beginning there's i there's people that reach out to me just because of the name of the show and they get what it is like right off the bat and i'm like mm-hmm. I'm not any person that anybody should really know. So the fact yes, that Yes, you are. No, no, but no, no. In terms of like when people, re- if they can read the title and then yeah. when they contact me, they're like, oh my gosh, I saw this and, I, and then I wanted to listen to one and then they actually like get it right off the bat. I'm like, that's more powerful to me at this point than just like, well, here's Javier Mercedes podcast. Like, <laughs> yeah. what does that mean to people that don't know me right off the bat? Absolutely. No, I totally understand. What are some other big projects that you have like in the pipeline? Or is there any other like big things that you have happened currently that you're like, man, I really didn't expect this to be the thing that popped off for me? I have definitely used the word pivot um, within the last month because I know I need to work. Uh, what is the phrase? Work smarter, not harder. I basically painted as much as I could humanly possibly paint with two kids running around this year. Um, So I don't think I could crank out as much content. Um, So yeah, there's a shift this year. It's happening and I will likely not be taking on 
especially at the beginning of the year, much custom work if at all, um, because I'm focusing on the um, the nostalgic stuff. And I would love to make one collection and several other nostalgic pieces a month and really start focusing more on what I've already worked hard on. For example, I have I have like 500 people on my 550 people on my mailing list. There were points during my busiest time where I would go months without emailing those people. Hello, I've sent three emails over the last um, six weeks. I don't like to blast people, but if something new is um, up on my website um, or if I have a sale going on, I'll just email people and they're following me for a reason. They want to know what I've been up to and boom, sales just start pouring in. I'm like, oh, yeah, they probably didn't want to hear from me if they signed up for that. So I'm focusing more on utilizing what I've got. And I do have a really sweet back pocket. Um, I guess, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. Basically, it helps that my brother works at the Chive and started the Chive. So that's another thing I didn't really talk about a whole lot up until this point. But um, Do you want to give the backstory now? <laughs> I can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So John and Liam, my older brothers, started the Chive. Um, the It's now... Gosh, it's not just a website anymore. There's Chive TV. There's um, an apparel line that's been around for years. I think they're um, bringing their beer back too. I think they brought their beer back. Yeah, they're, they're, they've got their hands in a lot of stuff. One thing that I am going to be focusing on in the new year is that I'll be sending more time-lapse videos to them for um, using it on Chive TV, um, which is in tons of bars. Hello, like, hello, perfect content for bars, this girl airports you name it and they've seeded some of my content here and there but it was like not great time-lapse videos of like one of the Blanton's bottles that I did and it was it still had people re reaching out um because they put my website and Instagram handle on it so imagine the millions of people that might see that I'm like huh hmm. they've asked me to send it over why haven't I send it over so really be being more forward thinking this year so that's the plan is to do less custom work because I really want to focus on utilizing the the Chive crowd hopefully once a month. I know John has mentioned that he would seed my content for me in um, one of his more popular posts called Daily Afternoon Randomness. Um, and I, I've kind of made a name for myself in the um, bachelor pad art world, which not many. That seems like quite the niche. You know, it's, <laughs> it's interesting, like showing at all of these shows, it's very feminine artwork and it's beautiful, um, but wow, it's neat. I didn't think about that, but yeah, there is a lot of that. Yeah. And I kind of backed into that on accident when, when John said he would promote some of my stuff. I was like, okay, what, what would Chivers like? And now I'm like really loving the voice that I can uh, give to guys and, and ha ha they really want cool stuff to hang too. Not that I'm the only person that's doing it. Uh, I mean, I am. I, 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 well, I'm talking about all the stuff that's in my house is basically yeah. paintings from you. Yeah. But it's cool paintings. Cool paintings. Yeah, a roundabout way of saying what's new in the pipeline is less commissions, more stuff that I really, really, really want to do, keeping it funny, making people laugh, um, trying to do at least every four to six weeks, one new collection. And I have so many more collection ideas. It's not all alcohol bottles. It's, it's a lot of different cool, fun ideas. Um, and a lot of people have been giving me ideas. So feel free to shoot ideas my way too. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the plan. Just keep painting because I really love painting. I love it. At this point, because I know you talk to a lot of people at your... Um at your, uh, are they gatherings? Is that what they're called? Like the art, yeah. ga the art galleries and everything? Yeah, events. and yeah. Um, When you, if, as your following has grown, have you been getting DMs from other artists that like want to pursue just doing art online full time? And like how has your art inspired them? Or can you give like a specific story of like, oh, I like gave advice for this kind of thing and it helped somebody do X, Y, and Z? One of my favorite ones is that uh, there's actually an artist, an, a local artist. Um, I totally want to name drop her right now. Her name's Kristen Moore. Um, she's K draws the line with an underscore. At oh, the yeah. End. Oh, yeah, for sure. She makes the most beautiful stuff. I found her during I love the, her stuff. Oh, yeah. my gosh. I found her during the East Austin studio tour and walked up and she had these beautiful. She still makes oil paintings. They're 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 stunning. They're pretty small. And she had probably 20 hanging. And I was like. Okay, you know, looking around, I'm like, where, where are your prints? Because I would have right then and there purchased several of them at this event. And she's like, oh, I don't make prints um, at this point. And I, I found out later that I think it's likely because when she went to art school, like 
she actually went to get um, a secondary degree, I believe. A lot of people are told, don't commercialize it too much. Don't um, don't make prints of a lot of your work. Like, okay, well then how in the world do you expect them to make a living off of this, people? Like, I, I don't know who's telling these artists what, but it's a terrible, it's terrible business. Like, <laughs> because really, like... I, Make There's, art that sells. I think that's one of the hashtags that you always put at your uh, thing. Yeah, it's underneath. like I want people to be able to get this. And mm-hmm. if if I'm charging X amount for this original painting, I can't afford it. You know what I mean? So so anyways, that's what I was like, girl, you need prints. And I gave her my print shop's information. I was like, just, just please do it. And I offered, I was like, come scan at my place if you want. And since then, over the last year, I've um, shown it a lot of live events with her. And sure enough, she has prints now and a ton of them are selling and it's mm-hmm. so exciting to see. And she, I know she's thanked me before and she would have, I'm sure, realized that sooner rather than later. But that to me was so exciting to to. I mean, because she, she quit her job recently and she needs to pay some bills. And if you can if you've already made this one cool thing and can replicate it for somebody else, like freaking do it. And hers is the uh, the skylines, correct? Yeah, she does a lot of skyline work. Um, she went to school in Los Angeles and was mm-hmm. really craving space mm-hmm. um, and started kind of honing in on these beautiful <clears throat> skylines. And uh, she does a lot of Austin work, L.A. work, um, and various other cities. And she she does take commissions, and she's really freaking good at it. One of the things that I first noticed is the, her use of negative space. It's like mm-hmm. the, like it's it's like different skylines, but it's like how she utilizes the negative space that also makes the painting like pop. I would mm-hmm. say, mm-hmm. and it's in square format just for that IG. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> she knows. She knows what she's doing for sure. Mm-hmm. When you go to do something um, in person, the first time you did it, and what you do now. What what has changed? Because to me, uh, I didn't even think about you have to have things to put your paintings on. You have to like you have to have supplies in order to like hand. Oh, you put out your little notebook and like if do you want to sign up for the email list? Like all of this stuff. Can you explain like what worked for you in the beginning and is it still working now and all that kind of stuff? Uh, yes. So one of my very first live events that I did, it was three years ago. It was a raw artist event and I couldn't even afford to frame my work before I showed it. And so about that, I, I didn't, I was like, I didn't even have a business account yet. They found me when I was doing the 90 day project and I was like, yeah, I mean, I had a ton of paintings, but I pitched to them, um, could I could I hang my work on um, clipboards because it's nostalgic and trying to let them, you know, but really in reality, I was like, I can't afford to frame all of these. Uh, and so there's a difference there presenting my work. You know, I've done the raw event now three years later and I was way more legit. <laughs> oh, it's like laughable, but you have to start somewhere. So um, and then this year, Kristen, the one that I was telling you about, she um she had been getting hold of the West Elm people. I was like, how did you get this gig? Because she invited me when they needed another artist. She was like, get a hold of Emily. She, she'll come. She's got a ton of work. Um, she's like, oh, I just bug them. I bug them until they say yes. I'm like, genius. I, should, I need more time to bug people to go to live <laughs> events because that's how you do it. Yeah. Just hit them up on Instagram and all that. But um, So she's been so awesome. But So that West Elm event was um, March of this year. Yeah, it was March of this year, and it was the first time in years since I started being an artist that I that I was going to a live event. So I'm like, okay. I looked up. I was like Googling everything. I'm like, I need holders. So I found like where I could find cool plexiglass holders to be able to be able to go through my prints or, you know, um, my greeting cards and everything else. So I got that, and I remember um, I had my print shop print off a vinyl sign for me. And when I got to the event, I was like, "Oh my gosh, Emily, how am I gonna ha- how am I gonna even hang this on the table?" Yeah. And so I've got this like total rigged sign with rope and trying to cover it with different tablecloths, like. That that was this year, people. Like I constantly fail still, so I can learn the next step. So if you come by to, you know, you're not you're gonna hear this after tomorrow. But if you were to come and see me at a live event now, and I'm able to bring a table with me, I just got in the mail this super legit. Um, it's a tablecloth cover that has Emily Mercedes art with my logo on the front. So you don't have to hang anything. I don't have to hang book. anything. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's I just genius. like hang. I put it over the four foot crappy target table that like folds down. Not that it's crappy. I mean, it holds my stuff. That's all I need. But 
it again, it was 150 bucks well spent and it has my Instagram and my email address on both sides of it. So if you're coming at me from one angle, you'll see it. That was Brian's idea because I just had the front taken care of. He's like, can you utilize the sides? Can you put your Instagram handle on there? I'm like, uh, yeah, probably. So I went mm-hmm. back to him. Oh, I can give you a great example. Um, ATX gals in town, um, another Kristen connection. She was, they needed another artist for one of their events. I was day 15 of the 100 day project. So I had a ton of new pro- project or new art to show. And they got a hold of me. They're like, hey, Kristen said that you're, that you might be available. Would you want to hang out with us and show your work? I didn't even know what it was. And I got there that day and I had 15 framed small paintings and four slightly medium size, like bigger paintings. And I got there and I had my stepping stool and I had my nails and I'm looking around at all these other artists and they've got these legit um, uh, levels and rulers to hang the things. I'm like, oh my gosh, the first time I've, I usually come with the table and schlep my stuff on it. I'm needing to fill eight feet of wall here and I needed to look good. So I was sweating bullets trying to, make it even with no level like it was decent enough but then right after that i went and again like it's all reinvesting in yourself but i went and got the biggest level you can find a small level i got two different kinds of rulers i I have pencils i have tape that i can mark the walls with like i go in there so much more confidently now after having shown with them for the studio tour and two other events like or i guess it was one other event i went in last saturday Oh my word, I was done. And I was still, I'm usually the last one there hanging because I do more s- small works and mm-hmm. everything like that. But just the level of confidence. And when you're going into something anxiety free, oh my word, your head's so clear. Mm-hmm. You're just like, I've got this. And I know I could talk to you a year from now and be like, remember when I said that? I do this now because I realized that was not a great way to do it. Mm-hmm. And I even this time around uh, intentionally made one more last piece for the event that was 16 by 20 so it could take up more wall space and draw people in. Was that the Instagram one? Yeah. That was so the cool. Can you, can you explain it really quick? Yeah, so I this was part of the nostalgia with the twist that I've been talking about, but I did a, an old-fashioned 1920s Polaroid camera that looks kind of like an accordion that goes out. Yeah, it looks like something would, that would take a photo of like Abraham Lincoln or something like totally. that. Like the old, the old, the old school where they like they put the hood over themselves. A little bit. Like, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. It's like a slightly newer version of that. Still real old. Um, and instead of the lens on the end, I put um, an iPhone with Instagram and some likes on it because it's so our variation. It's our... It's how we do Polaroids now. Mm -hmm. So it's play on old school versus new school. And it, I mean, the original, I finished it the morning of the event, not enough time for me to even have prints available at the event of the piece. Um, Nobody purchased that piece that night, but it was definitely the conversation starter of the night. And that's how you you draw people in and you, you can make conversation with somebody once they connect with the one thing, they just need to connect with one thing and then you got a conversation. I love how it's like you're making pieces of art as your 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 like funnel strategy in term but in like oh, yeah. in real life situation. And it's <laughs> and at this point it's I'm doing I'm painting things that I wanna paint that have been mm-hmm. I keep saying stuck in my head. It's I paint in my head all the time. I paint As I'm falling asleep, which is detrimental to my sleep sometimes because I will time lapse I will keep time lapsing if I if I haven't finished a piece by the time I go to bed, then I will co- I will continue painting it while I'm dreaming. That's it's crazy. I, yeah, it's kind of the same with video creation. Like every yeah. time I go to sleep, I'm like, all right, what can I create tomorrow that I can get done tomorrow? There's like so there was like so many videos and everything, and I have like such a backload of log of videos that I know could like kind of do well, but I don't know if I could get it done in a day. And now I'm getting more to the point of like. What I know I could just spend my day making a video and get done with it in a day. I'd much rather spend my time doing that. Yeah. And like being more efficient with that type of stuff. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, with that being said, um, the thing that I ask everybody at the end of the podcast, and I love the last time I asked you this for um, the interview, you've grown so much since then. What would you tell somebody that is just, I, let's say they're just graduating college and they either went to grad school um, or not grad school, but they they went to art school and how would they make money doing what they love in art? Practice as much as humanly possible and start calling yourself an artist. I might have said that last time, but if I talk to people that, you know, talk about art a little bit, I'm like, oh, are you an artist? Oh, no, 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 not really. And then they show me some of their work. I'm like, 
to you're an artist. Mm-hmm. Call yourself she an artist. She just had a dead face on her face. <laughs> like, <I> <laughs> yeah. You are an artist. You're an artist. So call yourself an artist if you want to be one. Um, it's hard because a lot of artists have and creatives have um, an inner critic that just needs to pipe down. But, you know, don't don't always listen to the inner critic because they don't always know what they're talking about. So practice as much as humanly possible. I wish I would have painted more in the different cities that I lived in and made time for that um, a little bit more. But it's easy to not do something if you don't have just the right idea. But 15 paintings in, you're going to be filled with ideas and you won't be able to stop. Um, So just practice a lot and you'll get a lot better. And don't be too hard on yourself. And it's okay to reinvest in yourself because you'll eventually make more money in the long run if you get all the right stuff that you need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to say you're the um, living embodiment of somebody that you practice what you preach because there's, there's, I feel like there's no excuses there for like, if there's anybody that I know that's like pursuing their passion and everything, there's, there's no excuse. Like if somebody were to come up and be like, well, I don't have time. Like, well, guess what? <laughs> Like I take care of my two kids. I actually spend time with my family and I've been putting out content almost daily for like, I don't How long have you been doing it now? Um, I think in June it'll be four years. Uh-huh. That's awesome. Yeah. So, but in, the thing is the growth is there. Like it's proven what, what you talk about. It, it worked like you, you do it, you know, you, you walk the walk and you talk the talk. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Since you do listen to all of the podcasts and everything, is, is there any other question that I've asked before or something like that where you'd be like, oh, I wonder if I would, wh- how I would answer that? Yes, you have asked a few people, what's your why? Oh, yeah, yeah. What is your why? Why do you do what you do? It's interesting to think about that because you hear other people answer that question. And then I was like, wait a minute. If he asked that question, how would I answer it? Because the obvious reason, you know, Pay, helping pay the bills or helping save for we want to buy a new house that kind of stuff like that is is very obvious why I'm able to bring in some extra income I am my best version of me if I'm painting and I want to give that to my husband my family my friends my my children I want to get be the best version of myself to everybody f- for me and for them so if I'm able to paint because it's very therapeutic no matter what's going on in my, in my life the day is going to be better. Like it's just going to be better. And I also am the type of person, I know there's few answers for this, but I'm not the type of person that can answer just with the one thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I realized that I really, really love to see a project to completion. And no matter what it may be, it is the most gratifying thing. And if I'm able to do that almost on a daily basis, imagine what my year has looked like. Boom, that's cool. I did that. And I can show somebody... I made this and I, I, or not show anybody and be like, I made that. So yeah, seeing projects to completion is like the ultimate gratification helps that I can pay some of the extra bills and helps that we can help save for a house. And, um, you know, with each successful run, there's less stress involved as well. So yeah, I guess that's a long winded way of why I do it. Yeah, for sure. I, I can agree, uh, especially with this podcast, because like sometimes because obviously from podcast to podcast, each guest will be like in a different kind of genre. So I can understand why like a whole bunch of people will come for one and yeah. then they may not stay for other ones. Thank you for sticking around, Emily. But, um, <laughs> but with that, like sometimes like the one with the Olympians, uh, I'll, I'll release that podcast and then it'll only get like 14 plays and then it'll get like a decent amount of um, downloads but it's just because like the right like I'll look at it and I'll be like no man that was a great conversation I really like enjoyed like making that piece I like I spent a long time editing going doing all that stuff and then I released it and it's more gratifying to me it's like all right even if nobody saw this which like people ended up seeing it like it still fulfilled me doing it and then lo and behold once it like other people once I found out oh on Reddit there's specific people for specific genres I was like oh I'll just like post this in a judo thing and then everybody in the judo community was like whoa cool like they like it so like to me, once every time I come out with a podcast, I'm just like, oh, if it's not getting views, it's just because like the certain people that would enjoy this kind of thing aren't there right now. But as I progress, it's just like the more and more people get on and I'm learning this like from the master, you yourself. It's like the more and more and more you do something, the more and more people like just start to connect the dots and be like, hey, 
that's the guy that does the thing, you know? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so thank you. Well, you're <clears throat> so welcome. And I do um, want to mention the fact that there for a little bit, I was making a painting for your podcast every for every oh, yeah, yeah. person you interviewed. Mm-hmm. And I, it was an idea that I kind of came up with when you, when you first started. When you approached me with it, I was like, I have no idea how I can repay you back in value, but thank you. <laughs> well, it was, it was very fun. So for a good, like, I would say eight or eight or nine episodes, maybe more. I, I think it was more than that. Yeah. Made a painting for everyone that you interviewed, and it was very cool because I was able to make connections with people that I would have never met before. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, speaking of the word pivot, I did have to go a few weeks ago and say, "Oh, because it was my busy season." I was like, "Javi, I won't be able to do this anymore." And you're like, "That's okay. You didn't have to do it in the first place." <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was super grateful that you were doing uh, yeah, it. Yeah, but place. Uh, that that to me was a very fun project to see what would happen, and it was so worth doing. And I loved mm-hmm. me, I loved every second of it. And I just wish there was more time in the day so I could keep doing it. But mm-hmm. um, I still will be your one of your biggest fans. Uh, I listen to every single episode and it's it's there it's inspirational go. for me no matter who you're interviewing. So mm-hmm. it's awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah. And then where can people find you? Oh, I know we've mentioned the Instagram before, but that's where all my time lapse videos for my paintings. It's Emily Mercedes Art. Um, and then EmilyMercedes.com is my website. I do have an Etsy shop. I don't really put a whole lot of stuff on it, but that's Emily Mercedes Art. Um, and Twitter is M Mercedes art like em mercedes art i believe i don't really tweet very often i mostly you can find me you can message me too i know i said that i don't take a whole lot of custom work on it doesn't it's not a forever thing and it's not exactly final i just have to be super intentional with my time this year so um if oh, you I, have an I, idea i think if the price is right then i think somebody comes in you know yeah <laughs> if the price is right or if it's for a cool client or something like always always reach out if you have a question about it because uh, you know I've been able to make time for some really cool things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like some podcast guests. Yeah. The GH5 thing that you came out with was super awesome. That and the the microphones that we're using right now are the is the uh sure sm7b she she painted that and like when i saw that i was like holy cow this is amazing <laughs> yes. yeah that's something i never would have even known about so it was fun to paint and again it's like it's part of my i mean instagram is basically your online portfolio so who knows who would see it like oh a really good example of that is um harvey danger you interviewed him mm-hmm. harvey danger films he's the nicest dude uh he he got a hold of me and he was like, listen, your time lapse videos, I've I've had this idea in my head for a while. I thought I'd just ask, would you be able to paint these four things? I have an idea for an invert. It was an inverted AeroPress coffee tonic, which I've never <laughs> tried, but it would involve, you know, painting the AeroPress, the actual drink itself, the fever tree tonic and um, camber coffee, like a bag of it. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have time at to do it but i was like that sounds really cool mm-hmm. yeah i'll make i'll make time for that so i was able to kind of eke in some time here and there to to do this but he made this beautiful video out of all of these things and lo and behold uh just through posting it to help promote the video on his page aeropress uh posted my video without even and it's totally fine like a lot of these companies just repost it and, mm-hmm. and will tag me um but i saw that the other day and i was like Oh, sweet. <laughs> I did paint your thing and it came to life and now it's there. I, and now it's there. So yeah, that kind of stuff happens a lot and it makes me happy. Well, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time oh, um, and you. all the things and your support of the Passion in Progress show with me, Javier Mercedes. If you would like to find me on Instagram, I'm at Javier Mercedes X on all the social things. And if you really enjoyed this episode, you know, could you tell them what they could do? Yes. Well, okay. Javi has a Patreon. Is oh, it, yes. I do have that Is too. it patreon.com slash Javier Mercedes? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And uh, definitely comment or uh, you can review. Mm-hmm. Review on iTunes. That's all of yeah. the things. Review and it better be a good one. Mm-hmm. Because it's so good. He's so good. <laughs> I didn't even think about like you can subscribe to podcasts and all that stuff. Yeah. But um, but yeah, even if you just want to share out a episode, it helps me out. And most of the time I try and pick a, uh, some sort of comment via if it's Facebook, Instagram uh, stories or on Twitter. If somebody's like shared the podcast and they've said something on each episode, I share a little quote from somebody that has shared out the post and said something nice about the podcast. So. Well, and I don't know, Javi, if everybody knows that if you're just finding this podcast and you just listen to it audibly, like he does an entire YouTube 
<laughs> yeah, you yeah. do an entire video so you mm-hmm. can see my face if you really want to and mm-hmm. his face if you go to is it passion and progress or javier mercedes if you look up passion and progress i'll pop up but yeah javier mercedes watch the there. whole video mm-hmm. you get to see behind the scenes mm-hmm. and in front of the scenes and in front of the scenes all the scenes all the scenes <laughs> <laughs> awesome thank you so much and we will see you guys on the next one don't forget to live that life of abundance